G'day everyone, welcome back to Wine for the People. I'm Brendan and today we're going to delve into an entire family of grapes. A particular favourite of mine actually, the Musket family. Now, the Musket family is arguably the most important family of grape varieties in the world. With over 200 variants, they're giving bloody COVID a run for its money. Musket has brought varieties into the Venice landscape like Catarato, Aliatico, and numerous other muskets like Moscato Giallo. Now, we could get really geeky on all of these great varieties for hours, but we're gonna focus on just, just two key members of this family, Musket of Alexandria and Musket Blanc a Petit Grain, both of which have important ties to the New World and the Old World across diverse and beloved wine styles. So, let's roll our sleeves up and get amongst it. Starting with Musket Blanca Petit Grain, which is by all means and possible definitions an ancient grape variety. It's been known for centuries in the Mediterranean with its first appearance of the variety in Italy under the name Muscatellus, a Roman name. It's been known under many synonyms throughout the Mediterranean, Muscatel in Spain, Von Musca de Clara in France, and even further north with names like Wuttenberg in Germany and Muscatella in, in Switzerland. With that being said, it's most likely originates actually from Greece, where the variety was spread by the Romans across Italy and southern France. Extensive DNA testing has actually shown that Musca Blanca Petit Grain is the top of the pedigree tree, I guess, of the entire musket family. The proverbial Al Capone in this scenario is literally the oldest of them all. It's been synonymous with some pretty epic wines across the world, both new and old. One of our favorites here at Wine for the People, at least for me, is Moscato d'Asti. Uh, now this often tends to get a bit of a bad rap as a wine style because it is ultra sweet, but the way they do it in Piemonte is one of the most joyous styles of wine to drink in the world. And generally speaking, it's a, a style of Musket Blanca Petit Grain here, they call it Moscato Bianco, that is very sweet. But also alongside that, it's also very low in alcohol, generally coming to about 5% ABV, which immediately doesn't have a major appeal, but when you chuck in the fact that it's carbonated, makes it a hell of a lot more of a thrill to drink. So in the end, you've got this sweet, sparkling, low alcohol number that is undeniably delicious. It's the absolute king of afternoon drinking. And what's even better, it's widely available in half bottles. You're getting all the joy of a lower alcohol wine without sacrificing flavor, in my humble opinion. At the other end of the proof spectrum, you have two very famous styles of fortified wine. In France, we have Vin du Naturel, or VDN, from, for those, I guess, who like TLAs, or three-letter acronyms. VDN is interesting, as a large majority of the alcohol actually comes from high-proof neutral spirit. So the wine is actually fortified in the very early parts of fermentation to keep the very grapey elements of the wine intact. One of the more famed examples is Musket Baume de Venise. Uh, in the Rhone Valley, where locally coined Musket de Frontignac is used to make one of the more compelling styles of fortified in the world, which we've actually tried for ourselves on this show in one of the very early episodes, and it literally blew our minds and melted our faces. It was that delicious. On the other hand, we have one closer to home, Rutherglen Musket, the quintessential Australian fortified. Now this thing is diabolically sweet. We're talking molasses syrup, sticky as it gets sweet. It's primarily made from a mutation of Musket Blanca Petit Grain, where the skins are a brownish hue to them and now being colloquially called here in true Aussie creativity, Rutherglen Brown Musket. These wines are extensively aged before release from anywhere from three years to well over 20 years of maturation in barrel. Some producers even flirt with Solera systems just to keep it spicy. It's lost a bit of its sheen over the years due to the immense sweetness of the wines, but it's pretty much as iconic as Aussie wine truly gets. Now, to the other key member of the Musket family, and I'm gonna say my personal favorite, is Musket of Alexandria. Now, Musket of Alexandria has an interesting name as there is a theory that the variety is native to Egypt. It would suggest its home is obviously the ancient city of Alexandria. But after some extensive research by some, it is more likely to have come from Greece or Southern Italy. And this is due to some interesting familial links, both to some Greek grape varieties and also varieties from Sicily and Puglia, amongst others. Musket of Alexandria is also thought to call Musket Blanca Petit Grains daddy, uh, as it's actually a natural cross between this and another ancient and very obscure grape variety called Atzina de Tres Bias, a red-skinned grape found in Sardinia, Malta, and a few other Greek islands. And much like Blanca Petit Grain, Musket of Alexandria is really old, having been proven to be cultivated for centuries all over the Mediterranean, particularly in Sicily, Greece, Spain, and France, 
and it's traveled as far south as South Africa as well. A large majority of Muscat of Alexandria is actually not really used for wine. Uh, they're actually used for table grapes because the grapes are just so bloody delicious. They're big, juicy, sweet, full of these apricot and orange blossom aromas that are undeniably enjoyable to eat at least before or even after fermentation. In fact, Italy has 20 times the amount of plantings of the variety dedicated to eating rather than drinking. But when it's used for wine production, it can be used in some pretty epic styles. In the south of Italy, particularly around Sicily, it's used in a multitude of ways. A lot of it uh, is used for dry table wine, for immediate consumption at very affordable prices. But one of the more interesting production methods of the variety is in the area on the small island of Pantelleria. Pantelleria, Panta, Pantelleria. Pantelleria, where they make Musket of Alexandria in the Pasito method. Uh, and on the island, the variety is actually trained into the UNESCO World Heritage listed head trained bush vines, where the grapes are left for extended hang time, hang time, before being picked and then dried on racks before being vinified into an immensely sweet wine that all of those apricot marmalade and, and orange blossom aromas are concentrated to a ridiculous degree. In Spain, it's also actually a notable style of fortified wine in Jerez called Sherry. Uh, generally, they call it Muscatel, uh, and it's generally grown around the town of uh, Chimpion uh, in their sandy soils, uh, where the variety actually thrives incredibly well. And overall, though, I guess in the world of sherry, it makes up a tiny part of production, less than 1% of the region's actual plantings. But a massive quantity of this variety is grown in the New World, in particular in California and Australia, where they thrive in the super hot regions like Central Valley and Cali, and Riverland, Murray, Darling, Riverina, that sort of area of Australia. Whilst here, a large component of it is again used for table grapes and raisins or sultanas. They've made themselves quite handy for wine production in the States. It's used for table white wines, sparkling sweet wines, not dissimilar to what they do in Southern Italy for their dry whites. In Australia, it's a similar story where for a long time, the variety had mostly been used for the rise of bag in box or cask wine. And many Australians will have fond or maybe not so fond memories of cardboard box boxes labeled um, like Fruity Lexia or Fruity Gordo. But that'll be a disservice to the material, to be fair, as Australia is actually home to large amounts of gnarly old bush vines. And several young producers have picked up on this and started working with them in kind of a bit of fun ways, namely uh, producers like Brash Higgins and, modesty aside, Unico Zello. And these plucky upstarts have started flirting with skin contact winemaking using the aromatic prowess of the variety in a very different way, seeing how the intense aromatics look with, I guess, a bit of structure and more oxidative handling. And as far as blind tasting is concerned, super simple, real quick. This one's really easy. If it smells like a bouquet of flowers and orange citrus and doesn't have much like acid like Riesling does, you're probably tasting a musket. It can actually be confused with like Gewurz Tramina or more in a niche sense, Torontes, which are also musket related varieties, but look for low acid in a dry wine and moderate acidity in a sweet wine and you're pretty much bang on there, but that aromatic profile is really gonna give it away. Now, if you wanna get your hands on either of these musket varieties in their different forms, there are a stack of options for Moscato Dusty, which I highly recommend. Have a crack at some Bera, and the good news is that most of your favorite Nebbiolo, Barbera, Dolcetto producers all kind of dabble with a bit of Moscato Dusty anyway. For a Skinzy number from the New World and a total shameless plug, our own Esoterico, Unico Zello Esoterico. Uh, it's our most beloved wine and a great showcase of the interest that you can get from Musket of Alexandria when you muck around with skin contact. Musket Bome de Venise is worth looking at for something fortified and interesting. And we've already verified the Domain de Bernardin um, uh, on the show. Fantastic, recommend that. Uh, for some uber sweet, give the Donna Fulgata Pasito di Pantereria a crack. Uh, nailed it. Uh, it's something to behold, honestly, particularly due to the sheer effort that goes into it and the price reflects that. Honestly, expect to drop around a hundred bucks. Now, if you lasted this far, comment below and prove it to us. Have you encountered musket before? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? And what food pairings would you throw at it? I always find that one a bit of, a, bit of an interesting one. Anyway, that'll do it. That's all from me. See y'all at the next one.